y'all. I'm Drake and this is Drake Makes Art. So a few years ago Jazza released a video about color theory and um, it was all about RYB versus CMYK and uh, he structured his video around um, these two superheroes and one represented RYB, one represented CMY and uh, they were battling the way that you know RYB and CMY are kind of battling for supremacy within the art community. And like, that's cool and all, but I think it was a pretty stressful day for Jazza. And in the midst of all that stress, he made a pretty big mistake in his artwork. Uh, first and foremost, elephant in the room, RGB. I think that happened because uh, if you open up Photoshop, if you go image and mode, you can select RGB mode, which is what I use by default. Now, why is this important? Well, somebody just released a video on color theory and spent some time talking about RGB and NYC and why they're important and how they're different and uh, I got to thinking you know it'd be really cool if I could get a copy of that line work and import it into Photoshop and do like a a coloring page of it and fix that mistake that Jazza made and color the RGB hero with the RGB color space and so I went to Jazza's website and he does offer electronic coloring pages. Unfortunately, he does not offer that particular image. But you know, if I could get my hands on the original, I could probably still make this idea work. You know, if if only if only I had bought it back when Jazza was auctioning off all his artwork. So I started by taking a photo of the artwork and scrubbing it down to just the line work, which actually wound up being a lot harder than I originally thought it would be because of the texture left by the pencils Jazzy used to color the piece. Once I had the line work isolated, however, it was just a matter of selecting my color palette, which included only the RGB CMY colors without black or white, setting my blend mode to linear burn, which will create subtractive color mixes, and I got to it. I decided to start with the CMY character, so first I laid down my base colors, then set to work refining my shadows and highlights to give the flat color block some depth. I've got a level with you. This was my first time ever painting digitally. I've done some graphic design work in Photoshop, but I never really used the brush tools for more than adjusting a mask. Getting into the groove of things was a struggle, and I probably painted and undid and painted and undid and painted and undid every brush stroke about a million times. A friend graciously allowed me to borrow her digital art tablet for this video, and it had a little bit of a learning curve. Plus, my computer screen started doing this weird thing where it would cover up my brush strokes with white squares until I released the cursor again, so sometimes I couldn't even see what I was painting. I'm also not entirely sure what I did to make the brush strokes so streaky, but I think it might have had to do with the fact that I set my brushes blend mode to linear burn instead of my layers blend mode. Would that have fixed it? I'm not sure. <laughs> However, you can see from this footage that, even though the outcome is definitely streaky in places, the colors are blending just as we would expect, and when we layer all three primaries together, they drop all the way to black. Because RGB is an additive color space, I decided to invert the line work and color over a black background because this color space is working up to white instead of down to black. I set my blend mode to linear dodge this time to create additive color mixes. Then just like before, I started by laying out my primary color blocks, then added in shadows and highlights to define shapes. This is the part of the project I was most excited about, not just because it's the part that sparked this video, but because it's pretty familiar territory to me. Before I started making YouTube videos, I worked as a lighting designer, which means I worked primarily in this color space. 
I tend to think in RGB more than any other color space. My friends can even attest that I've said yellow is not a color before. There's red with some green in it, and green with some red in it, but I'm not entirely sure yellow actually exists. Honestly, the fact that Jazza labeled this character wrong is the reason I bought it in the first place. For me, this piece isn't just about two rival color spaces battling for supremacy within the art community, it's about the tension between traditional art and digital art, between additive and subtractive color. Personally, I see this piece as capturing the full range of my artistic impulses, both the lighting design and the traditional art I've done. Once I'd finished RGB, I flipped the line work back to black because I thought it would help bring the piece together now that it was all colored. Then there was just a few finishing touches to be done, and of course, adding my own signature next to Jazz's, since this piece was now mine too. Are my pieces better than Jazz's? No, I don't think so. But I really enjoyed this process, frustrations and all. There are some parts of these characters that I really love, and I think the blending worked really well, while some parts are just... streaky. Ugh. Even so, I think I'd like to give digital art another try in the future. Maybe a project with a wider color palette that doesn't rely so heavily on blending. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see me do more digital art, please let me know what you'd like me to create in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe so you can see more. Thanks again, and I hope I'll see you next time when we make something new. Bye.